Hi there, welcome to DIY Comics FAQ. I'm GE Gallus and I'm here to answer all your questions about indie comics, graphic novels, web comics, zines, self-publishing, storytelling, you name it. Uh, if you like my videos, don't forget to subscribe. Today we're answering a question from Jen S. Abbott at JS Abbott Creates on Twitter. They say, I guess just the basics of starting, getting ideas, and generating characters and environments. Uh, so this is, of course, a really big question. Um, I could talk hours and uh, hours about this question to try to answer it. Um, so I'll just try to give you a brief idea of where to get started, and I'd be happy to go into more details in future videos. Um, so how to get started. I really start with what I call the seed of an idea. That just means, you know, an idea that can grow. Um, so just a small, simple, hopefully simple idea that I think could, is easy to develop or that I have a passion for and that I want to develop. Um, I just think that that's always my starting place and it might be a good way to think about it for you. Two, you don't have to have a fully formed idea to start with, you know, it's just, you know, you might get an idea one day and it's like, well, how do I make this idea into a fully formed comic book or graphic novel? Um, so I think that what I like the most about thinking of this as the seed of an idea is that the characters and environments just kind of grow organically from the seed of the idea. I know that the term the seed of an idea might be a little confusing or difficult for some of you to understand at first, so let me try to explain myself better. Um, I'm going to start with an example of my own work and so hopefully you'll get a better idea about what I'm talking about. So I'm going to explore this idea of the seed of an idea through my graphic novel, The Poet and the Flea, about the poet painter William Blake. So I'm gonna start with how I developed this idea, how I got this idea, how I developed the idea, and how I made it into a self-published comic. So really, the seed of the idea for The Poet and the Flea was when I happened to be online and came across William Blake's painting of the ghost of a flea. Um, so here I have it. This is a beautiful Blake book that I got from the Tate um, Museum in London. They just had an amazing William Blake exhibit that I was lucky enough to travel to London and get to see it. They hadn't had a Blake exhibit like it in over 20 years, and they had 300 plus of Blake's work, so it was a really inspiring uh, exhibit for me to attend. Um, I hope that some of you perhaps were able to see it too. And actually, I believe that it's going to be coming to the Getty Museum in LA soon, so maybe some of you in the US will also be able to see this amazing exhibit. Um, so this is the ghost of a flea. You know, I know you you probably think of a flea as like a little insignificant, you know, bug, <laughs> but the ghost of a flea is a very scary, big, muscular, blood drinking, I don't know if demon is the right word, ghost, he's definitely a ghost, um, and Blake, historically, you know, it's been recorded that he had visions of demon, uh, not demons, he had visions of angels and ghosts, lots of ghosts, and I think that the ghost of a flea was really like the one malevolent evil character he happened to see. Um, so this, when I saw this and I read about it, I was like, this is an amazing painting. It's so inspiring. William Blake is such an interesting character. Um, so I, I did more research into William Blake because at the time I didn't know much about him. So doing more research about Blake, I quickly found his work, Songs of Innocence and of Experience. And as you can tell, um, these are really amazing. They're illustrated poems. 
and I, I saw this and I was like, wow, this is really like a precursor to comics and graphic novels. Just the combination and integration of illustrations and words. Um, so I, I saw this and because at the time I wasn't really doing comics anymore. I was focusing on other things. So this is kind of what pushed me back into comics. But it was like, wow, this is the perfect subject for a comic, William Blake. Um, so what does this have to do with developing characters and environments? Um, so as I said, my the seed of my idea was the ghosts of a flea and William Blake. And as I developed this idea, it was clear to me who the characters and the environments were. So. William Blake became my protagonist, the ghost of a flea became the antagonist. There were obvious characters such as William Blake's wife Catherine who was very important in his life as well as his younger brother Robert who was very important in his life. Um, and other characters from the amazing Blake mythology that I wanted to include. I wanted to not just be a straight biography. I wanted to have a lot of historical facts to it, but I also wanted it to really express Blake's creativity and all of his amazing poems and characters and, you know, the deep world that he had created, the amazingly complex world he had created. Um, so that's really where I got, I mean, that, I know that sounds like a lot. Um, I know a lot of you are going to want something very much more simple than that. Um, and there's no right or wrong answer here, of course. This is just going off of my personal experience. Um, so, you know, a seed of an idea can be something as simple as, okay, I want to write a slice of life comic. So if it's slice of life, that's probably semi-autobiography semi-autobiographical to fully autobiographical. So then that's kind of easy to think of the characters and environments from that. If you're writing about and drawing about yourself, then it's like, okay, well, you're a character, your family, your parents, your husband, your wife, whoever in your life are your characters and the environments are your house, your workplace, whatever it happens to be. So um, in that way, slice of life is probably a really easy jumping off point for a lot of artists. Um, you know, you could be, you know, have say, I want to do a rom-com, a romantic comedy. That might be the seed of your idea. So then you want to say, okay, well, there's the main character and the love interest and the rival and whoever else. So I think for me, the easiest thing, the thing to take away from this is to start with the story and the characters and the environments will kind of come naturally from that. I think it's much more difficult and people do this. There's no, you know, this is not to say you shouldn't do this this way if you think it's easier. I know that some people create the characters first and then put them into a story, but I personally would never be able to do that. I kind of have to have, okay, this is what might potentially be going on in the plot or, you know, this is who I want to, the topic that I want, and then the characters are kind of developed from there. Um, and going to touching to touch briefly on environments, um, it's the same as the characters. For Blake, it was clear that the environment was going to be 18th century London. It was going to be his apartments. You know, he lived in different parts of London. Um, so of course, a lot of research went into writing and drawing the Poet and the Flea Volume 1 and a lot of research and time has gone into developing Volumes 2 and 3. Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of how I start out. And then once I have that seed of the idea and the characters, I usually do an outline to try to kind of just hash out what's going to happen. Um, this is stuff that I can discuss in more videos. There's so much to get through. Um, so if you want me to talk about outlining your plot, writing a script, doing thumbnails, doing research, which for me is both like factual, historical research, but also visual research, um, you know, like 
for Blake, I did a ton of research of what he drew, what he, all of his art. Um, so that was, a, and also as well as the time period, what kind of clothing they were wearing. So a lot of research went into that. Um, so, you know, I hope that this is helpful. I hope that this is a good place for you all to start. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions that this video has brought up for you. And yeah, I'm looking forward to developing this further because this is obviously a very complex question of where do you start? Where do you generate your characters and environment? Um, I hope that this is a good jumping off point and I look forward to discussing it more. I also just wanted to briefly mention two books that really helped me and have helped me over the years. Um, you know, I, these have really been kind of the Bibles of storytelling for me, which I say ironically because I'm not at all religious. So, um, and I, I mentioned the one book before. Um, this is Joseph Campbell, The Hero with a Thousand Faces. Um, this has always been a really good tool for me for storytelling, just kind of the basics of what all stories are, the Universal Hero's Quest. This book has inspired many people, as you can see George Lucas, you know, we have um, Luke Skywalker on my copy, the cover of my copy. Um, so this, I would say this is a college level read so maybe some of my younger viewers this might be a little intimidating um so i mean i read it in high school and really enjoyed it um if this is kind of scary to you then i would definitely check out the wikipedia article of the hero with a thousand faces as well as the mono myth wikipedia article it kind of boils everything down as you would expect into easy understandable parts um, so I highly recommend this book this is something that I'd love to talk about more in my videos another book that I wanted to talk about was this Vicki King how to write a movie in 21 days um, I know it's about screenwriting which some of you may think oh that's not gonna help me write a comic but writing a comic is very similar it has some similarities to writing the screenplay and I think that this formula is really adaptable to any um, any medium you choose whether it's a comic or a screenplay or a novel or whatever you're trying to write um, this copy I got from my dad I think this book is as old as I am this copy I saw on Amazon that they're releasing I think in August I think I saw they're releasing a new copy a new edition of this so this might be a really good starting place of how to tell a story it's really simple easy read um, and this book, I actually really got into it when I was at NYU Gallatin. I took a writing for television class with the amazing Imani Douglas, my professor. Um, she is well known for having been a writer on the television show Hanging with Mr. Cooper. That's a little bit before my time, so it might be a little bit before all of your times too. Um, but she was really an amazing, inspiring professor, and she used this book in her classes. Um, so hopefully that'll, you know, raise your expectation and your thoughts about this book. Um, so even someone who's on a successful, a writer on a successful television show uses this book to teach. Um, so yeah, I'd love to talk more about this book. Definitely get your hands on this book. It might really help you start as a starting point for your comic or screenplay or whatever else you choose to write. If you'd like me to answer your questions in a future episode, please comment below or tweet me at GE Gallus. It's just at G-E-G-A-L-L-A-S. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. I hope that my videos have been helpful so far and I hope that when I, you know, future videos it'll all build upon itself to give you a much fuller, more complete idea of what it is to do your own comics. 
um, want to support this channel, please subscribe. It's free and it's one easy click away. I'd really appreciate it. Um, that's all for now. See you next time.